lecture we shall be showing you some more interfacing into experiments namely we shall be showing you how to interface a DC motor with the STM32 microcontroller board. We have used a small DC motor as an example to show you how this kind of interface can be done. So, we shall be showing you a couple of experiments on the controlling of the motor and how the speed can be varied we shall be talking about that. So, we shall be discussing that how motor can be interfaced and how speed can be sensed we shall be talking about some experiments and demonstration. Now, the motor interface that I shall be showing you in this experiment well if you can see it once this is the motor that I have interfaced you can see there is a motor down below and there is a wheel which is connected to the shaft which can rotate right. This is the kind of setup I have used ok. Coming back to the slide. So, in the picture on the right I am show I have showed that same shaft where you can see that there are 8 slots which are cut 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, the rotating shaft is connected to the metal wheel where there are 8 slots and on this side you can see a black kind of a thing there is an arrangement which is an optocoupler circuit which I shall be talking you about telling about. You see earlier you had seen how an LDR circuit can be used to sense optical interruptions and count the number of objects which are crossing a certain point may be number of persons entering and leaving a room. Here we could have used LDR and some kind of LED light source also, but here we thought let us use some other kind of an optical I mean sensing circuit where you can also measure interruptions and this is something which is called an optocoupler. So, we shall show you or tell you that how an optocoupler works, but the idea is that you see the optocoupler is strategically placed just in the place where the wheel is rotating because there are 8 slots in the wheel for one complete revolution there will be 8 interruptions ok. So, there will be 8 such optical interruptions for every rotation of the wheel and this circuit that we will be using will be generating one pulse for every interruption for one revolution there will be 8 pulses ok. And the motor because it is a small motor we are using we can drive it directly from a microcomputer output port microcontroller output port we have used one PWM port. But if it is a larger motor of course, you need to use a driver circuit which can supply the required voltage and current to drive that larger motor, but this being a small motor we can drive it directly from the microcontroller port. And the point is that because we have used a PWM port again by changing the duty cycle the average value of the control that you are sending to the motor is changing. So, means we are turning on and off on and off on and off. So, the average speed of the motor can be controlled this is the idea right. So, let us see how this optic optical interruption works using this optocoupler circuit. You see basically an optocoupler is the arrangement of two things one is some kind of a light source well in the circuit that we are using this light source is an infrared light emitting diode it is an IR LED. So, it emits a light, but in the infrared frequency band and on the other side there is a photo transistor. A photo transistor is a kind of a transistor where there is no emitter no base connection like in a normal transistor there are two terminals only, but the base is replaced by an optical mechanism whenever there is a light the transistor turns on and when there is no light 
the transistor is off. So, whenever this this LED throws a light on this transistor, the transistor conducts and there will be a current flowing path from 3 to 4. right? So, the circuit that you can use is something like this in the LED part there will be some kind of an LED driving circuit as you know it will con consist of a resistance in series with a power supply and this you can switch on and off as required. And on the other side there will be another circuit using a resistance and this transistor whenever the transistor is conducting this output voltage will be ground low, low, low voltage and when it is off this output voltage will be close to VCC. So, this optocoupler mechanism looks like this you see there is a small hole in between and the wheel is actually placed in between those two plates here these black plates right. This is how it is arranged. Now, talking about the connection diagram the connection diagram is fairly simple this motor as I said it will be driven directly from a PWM output port. So, here we have used the port D 3 of course, there is another terminal to connect to ground and for driving this motor or this speed sensing this optocoupler circuit I am using this 5 volts and ground because VCC and ground are required and this output of this optocoupler this is fed to digital input pin D 4 because this will be a digital output either 0 or 1 whether it is interruption or no interruption. So, I am connecting it to D 3 for controlling the motor rotation and D 4 for sensing the optical interruption from the optocoupler. So, in our first experiment we shall be using only D 3 in the second experiment we shall be using both D 3 and D 4 right. So, let us first talk about the first experiment. In the first experiment we interface the motor using the circuit that you have just now shown. In addition we are also interfacing a push button switch like this. So, if the switch is not pressed the output point will be high if the switch is pressed it will be low it will be connected to ground right. So, whenever switch is pressed the switch output which is connected to port line D 2 will become 0 and if the switch is not pressed it will be 1. So, the experiment goes like this we would be continuously pressing the switches so, initially the motor will be rotating at some speed. So, whenever we press one switch so there will be three different levels of speed one is the maximum speed one is the medium speed and the other is off motor will be turning off. So, when I go on pressing the switch maximum medium off maximum medium off this cycle will repeat right. This is how the experiment goes. Let us look at the program code. The program code is a little long it spans over two slides let us see here as I had said the motor control we are using this PWM control output line D 3 for controlling the motor depending on the duty cycle the speed of the motor will vary. And the output of the switch push switch that I had said it is connected to D 2 this is a digital in type of input a digital input. In the main program here we have defined a variable called state initialized to 1 state actually indicates that in which state the motor is because it is in three states right maximum speed medium speed and off. So, in which state it is that is indicated by the state variable I am initializing it to 1 it will go on 1 2 3 again 1. Okay. Now, motor period I have set it to 0 0.1 which means 100 millisecond. So, in 100 millisecond period I repeat the process and initially I set the duty cycle to maximum 1.0 motor equal to 1.0 this 
this is equivalent to motor dot write 1.0. In both these ways, we can set the duty cycle. You can either call this function right or you can simply write motor equal to 1.0. Okay? So, initially it is rotating in the maximum speed. Now, in this while loop, first we are checking for a switch press. If a switch is pressed, so how do you check? If the push switch, this digital in push switch, this name is 0. 0 means switch has been pressed. If it is 0, then I increment state by 1. Initially, it was 1, it will become 2. Then I check if it has become 4, because it can be only 1, 2, 3, right? So, after 3, if you do plus plus, it will become 4. So, if it tries to become 4, you again bring it back to 1. So, in this loop, it will go along 1, 2, 3, again 1, 2, 3 like this. And after this switch press is detected and you have incremented state, you wait till the switch is released. So, as long as push switch remains 0, I wait in a dummy loop. This is a dummy loop. So, if I if you keep the switch pressed for a long time, it will wait in this loop. As you release it, then only the motor speed next one will take, take effect. So, in the next slide, we actually show you how the speed control is done. Then there is a switch case statement. There is a switch statement which actually checks the value of state, variable state. It can be either 1, it can be 2, it can be 3. So, if it is 1, then you are using the maximum duty cycle. If it is 2, the next one, this is medium speed and if it is 3, then it is 0, 0.0. So, this thing you go on repeating in a cycle. right? So, let us now see the demo. Okay. This is the first experiment, just the experiment that we have shown that same one. Let us compile it. Save it, copy and paste. Now, say this, the motor starts rotating. So, you can see here that the motor is rotating and it is the maximum speed. And here, I have interfaced a small push switch here. Here, you can see here there is a push switch and one terminal of the push switch is connected to this resistance to VCC and the other terminal of the switch is connected to ground. And the middle point of the switch, this one this is connected to the input line D 2. Okay? And regarding the interface of the motor, if you see there are some terminals. This is the 5 volts which I have connected to the 5 volt point. This is black wire is ground, I have connected to ground and this yellow wire is the control, this is the PWM control. This is the PWM control which is connected to uh, D 3 P W M D 3 line and this other line green one this we shall be this we shall be using in the next experiment this will be using the optocoupler output. Okay? But in this experiment we are not using this optocoupler. Right? So, you see motor is rotating in the full speed if I press this switch once I press once now the speed has decreased now it is medium if I press another time motor will turn off. Okay, I press once more, it will again start rotating in the maximum speed. Then I press once more medium speed. Okay. This is maximum speed. Medium speed off. 
all right this cycle will repeat okay let us continue now in the second experiment uh, we are doing certain things now you think of the motor you have the motor out here this is the symbol of a motor now normally what we have done we are using one control line from the microcontroller to control the speed so that we have connected to the pwm output line d3 now in this experiment we are also using the output of the optocoupler because we want to count how many or what is the speed of rotation how many pulses are coming per second something like that or per minute so the optocoupler output we are connecting to digital input line d4 right now after counting the point is how do i know what is the speed how do i show so for that reason we have also interfaced an lcd with the microcontroller circuit so i am not showing the details of lcd interface because you have already studied this and saw this in some earlier lecture so you know how lcd is interfaced we have an interfaced lcd in the 4 bit mode as was demonstrated earlier so this is how it works now there is another point i shall be explaining when i show you the program now one point you see now i here as i have said already this embed dot h is included and for lcd interface i need to interface text lcd of course we do not use scroll so the third one is not required really but i have used both and motor drive i have connected to d3 pwm out and d4 is my input that is coming from the output of the optocoupler now let us try to understand when i write a program how do i count suppose i want to count how many such pulses are coming per second how do i count there must be a way to count how many pulses are coming per second now the way we have implemented it in our program is that we have used the concept of interrupt what is an interrupt interrupt is a mechanism like this suppose we have a processor this is our stm32 this is our processor board and from outside some interrupt is coming here we have connected it to the digital input line d4 now when you discussed interrupts earlier you recall we told you that any of the digital io lines can be used as an interrupt pin so here we are using this d4 as an interrupt input how do i declare that i declare it at instead of telling it digital in i mention it as interrupt in and the name of this object i have given as wheel and for pwm out i am calling it motor right now the point is that for interrupt what really happens uh, means if you have studied it earlier in some course or somewhere you know that when an interrupt signal comes to a processor whatever the processor was executing that is temporarily suspended and the control jumps to another program or routine that is called interrupt service routine after execution of the interrupt service routine control comes back to the program which was suspended this is how it works now in this case every time there is an there is an optical interruption so for one revolution there will be eight such interruptions so there will be some pulses coming like this okay so every time there is an optical interruption there will be an pulse and each of this pulse will be generating an interrupt signal so interrupt service routine will be called so many times okay so what we have done here is that you see this is actually the interrupt service routine this count this function i will show you how we declare it as an interrupt service routine but suppose for the timing 
this is the inter of service routine. What we have done? We have declared a global variable integer variable called pulses initialize it to 0 and in the inter of service routine we are just increasing pulses by 1 pulses equal to pulses per 1. So, that whenever interrupt comes the variable gets incremented by 1 and the other thing to note here is that as I said we have also interfaced an LCD and these are the standard interfaces you recall the first of these is your uh, that register select, second one is your enable and last four are the most significant data lines for 4 bit interface. So, we have connected the pins from the LCD to D 8, D 9, D 10, D 11 and this enable to D 12 and R s to D 13 and of course, VCC ground and that you recall there is a potentiometer which we used like this. This we connected to another pin called VEE for LCD contrast arrangement, but this was connected to 5 volts. So, this potentiometer circuit is also there. So, this LCD circuit we have already done, but I am not showing it here because you already have seen earlier how LCD is interfaced. Okay. Now, I told you this is the interrupt service routine. Now, let us see how this interrupt service routine is mentioned. This is our main function. First thing is that you note this line. This is the place where we are specifying the interrupt service routine. We are saying that wheel is that object which is connected to that interrupt line that we call wheel. Rise is a function means it checks every time the signal rises from 0 to 1 that is called rise. Whenever there is a rise you call this function ampersand count means this is a pointer to a function that count was the name of that function you call count every time there is a rising edge on this wheel that is how interrupt service routine gets called and we have declared a variable called rpm where you are counting revolutions per minute. There is a character array called msg message. For the motor driving we have assumed a period of 100 milliseconds as in the early experiment same thing we chose and for motor initially the duty cycle is set to 0.9 and CLS function initially clears the LCD screen and in the main program main while loop what do we do? See initially the pulses was initialized to 0, now we wait for 1 second wait 1.0 that means in this 1 second the motor is rotating. So, there how many pulses are coming in this 1 second will get counted pulses will get incremented by so many times at the end of it we calculate revolutions per minute because we have counted for 1 second for 1 minute it will be multiplied by 60 and because there are 8 holes in that wheel 8 slots. So, for every revolution there will be 8 interruptions. So, we will have to divide it by 8 this will give you your revolutions per minute or rpm value and what we do we sprintf means you can print this value into a string you are printing the value of this rpm as an integer into this character string. Then we are displaying on LCD it is a two line LCD display if you recall on line number 0 we are displaying a string the rpm is and on line number 1 we are displaying this message whatever is the rpm. And after we do this we reinitialize the value of pulses to 0 so that in the next cycle we again carry out with the counting and you repeat this process again wait for 1 second again the pulses will get counted for 1 seconds again you calculate rpm and print it. Okay. This is the program and let us see the demo now. So, here this is our experiment 2.
So, this is the same program that I have shown the same code this I am trying to compile. So, I compile it save it copy it and paste it to F folder. Now, let us see what is happening. See, uh, in the program we have sent the duty cycle to 0.9. So, you see the motor is rotating at a very high speed, reasonably high speed. Now, the switch circuit is not being used in the experiment. So, the switch is not read, but you look at this LCD display here. This is the potentiometer for controlling the contrast. So, you can adjust it for suitable contrast. You see it is showing the RPM is 1095, 1065. You see this motor is a very cheap and small motor. So, the speed is not very stable. So, it is varying a little bit. Okay. So, 1027, 1100, 1095. So, the RPM is going like this. right? So, this you can view this RPM value here. This RPM value you can see, right? Okay. Now let us see if I change the duty cycle. Does the RPM value changes? Let me see this. You see here, the motor duty cycle was set to 0.9. Let me change it to 0.9 to 0.7. Let us say. Let me change it to 0 0.7. Let us save it. Compile it again. And we save this copy paste. So, now see the same thing is happening, but now the motor is rotating at a much slower speed. If you look into the motor, it is a little slower, it is rotating at a slower speed, and now, now if you display, you see the RPM value displayed it is showing 600 something 592, 610, 15 like that. So, the RPM values are dropped significantly you see. So, now you can see that if you change the duty cycle of the of the signal that is used to drive this motor. Okay. So, the RPM value automatically changes and how we are doing this green line is the output of this optocoupler this is connected to this interrupt input pin D 4 and and as the program has been shown we are counting that multiplying by 60 and then dividing it by 8 to get the value of the revolutions per minute which is then displayed on this LCD screen which you can see out here. This is the overall experiment. Okay. So, now, you see just one thing let me tell you in this context. Uh, suppose I ask you to modify this program to control the speed of a motor. So, you can do it very easily. Suppose I say you set the RPM value to 800. So, you do not know how much duty cycle will make it 800. So, in this way you calculate read the value and if you find that the RPM value is lower, you increase the duty cycle little bit and again read. If it is lower, you again read. See, see earlier we talked about uh, this integral control, on off control, PID control all these things. So, all these things can come into the picture here, but because the program will become complex, we are not showing those in this demonstration, but you can also have it. You can set a preset RPM value and you can adjust the RPM adjust the motor drive to make it work accordingly. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you.